All right, we're back with this 66 Vox Thomas Organ era pacemaker, and I want to get rid of the background buzz, which is there regardless of the volume setting, but it's certainly made worse when the volume is up. And it's going to be a, a lot of the ground loops that are built into this amp. And the primary one is at the input due to the way the chassis is constructed. Now, a week or so ago, someone asked me, which is better, a Switchcraft style jack like these, where the uh, ground is tied to the chassis, or, an, or a cliff style like you find in a Marshall. One of these, where the jack itself is isolated from the chassis, and you make the grounds with a wire. And my answer was a not very satisfying to anyone, I think. It depends. Because it depends. It depends on the entire amp as a, as a system. You have to step back and look at the whole thing. What are you trying to accomplish? In a Fender, you can use just a metal frame switchcraft just fine. Uh, and that's what they did here, but it's not just fine. And I'll tell you why. This chassis is in two parts. You have this shell, which has uh, the, the bulk of the circuit in it. And then you have this front panel, uh, which has all the jacks and pots. And when they all go together, there's a little metal tab here, which lines up with the metal here. And you put screws from, on either side. And uh, it holds this to this. So if it had no wire from the jacks to the ground here, you would not have a ground loop, but you'd be relying on relatively poor metal-to-metal -metal contact here that's just mechanically holding it together. And so that would not be a very reliable ground. It's possible if that screw came loose as the amp vibrates, you'd lose ground. So what they did was they put a wire from the ground here on this terminal strip to one of the uh, input jacks. And I started off by rebuilding it as they had. But then you don't lose the contact between here and the ground at the input jacks, but you have a loop because this does make contact when it's all together. And then you have two paths to ground and uh, they're not exactly the same, but um, they're, it's a good enough ground to cause a loop. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove these metal frame switchcraft jacks and put in these isolated cliff jacks, and I will have two ground wires. I'll have a wire which runs from the jack negatives, all the signal negatives, to this endpoint uh, ground point on the chassis, which is where the uh, first preamp cap filter cap is grounded. And I'll have a separate wire going from a ground point on this panel, probably a back, the back of one of these pots or something, Actually, I'll probably use this speaker jack here, this auxiliary speaker jack ground, and just to tie this to here. So even if these come loose, there will be a good shield ground from this part of the chassis to this part of the chassis. No, no current will flow through there. It's not a signal ground. It's just tying these two pieces of metal together better than these screws, which are uh, subject to old dirt and uh, coming loose and vibrations. It's just making this a full, uh, fully connected metal shield. And it does not matter for shielding if there's a, a path here and a path here and a path at the other side. So let me remove all this stuff and slightly enlarge the panel hole openings and put in three cliff jacks and see where the buzz is at. If you see the previous video, you'll hear the buzz I'm talking about. I think we can get rid of that and I think this is going to be the first major step towards doing that. All right, I got the uh, jacks replaced and all the grounding changes in the front like I talked about. And the buzz that was always there regardless of the volume settings is gone. And even at higher gains, that buzz is much lower. There is some residual buzz, which I will be uh, making some change in the screen supply to dial that back and here there. That's an oscillation that's happening. So I've got to do a little bit of uh, lead dress changes and stuff on that. I have just have a little too much gain in this amp. I need to get it so it goes high gain without being uh, unstable. Get right to the verge of that. So right there above five is max gain on this and that sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
Plenty of gain, because that stuff there. Doesn't add that much more gain, it adds a lot of weirdness in the background. So, right there is as far as I'm going. And then let me show you some of the cleans. Crazy tight. Sounds a little more reminiscent of the UK Voxes. That's there, but if you want to sound like a big old fender. So this is really getting there, uh, just a little more stuff to do as far as the screen no grounds, uh, but based on the sound as it is right now, this is so worth it. <laughs> 